And thank you for that introduction. That's um, fantastic. Right, I'm going to share my screen. And hopefully it all works well. I've got a couple of monitors and it's always a challenge to work out which one to share. And then when I go live with my slides, um, just double checking, can you see my LinkedIn dashboard at the moment? Yep, yeah, great. Alrighty, now I'm going to share my slides and this is where it all goes crazy because sometimes Zoom disappears um, behind this, yes, which it just did. Um, oh, let me just quickly get that back. Um, uh, quickly do that. Now I'm just going to quickly get out of there. One moment. I'm just going to quickly in my show and then get bring my Zoom to the other monitor because it's it's stuck behind and I can't see you, so I can't see a thing. Um, oops. Let me just so what we are that. seeing is your slide deck, and now it is flipped back to your dashboard. Yep, great. Okay, I'm just going to move that over. Um, it always does this to me, and um, it's always and it's always a challenge. There we go. So now I can still see you, and I can see um, you should be able to see the slides as well. Excellent. Great. So um, I've, I've called this sort of presentation future proofing your brand because, you know, you've all got a personal brand and it's about preparing you for the future or building, building your brand for the future. So for those um, who don't know me, um, some, some of you may have come across me, but if you ha haven't, this is uh, me. So you've already done the intro, you know those things about me. Um, I've been specializing in, in LinkedIn over the last decade, just over, over the um, decade, going deeper and deeper into LinkedIn. and when I first started, I was doing more social media general. Um, and now I guess I'm known as a LinkedIn specialist, but I do talk about content and personal branding. So other platforms I do talk about, but I'm not certainly not an expert in any of the other platforms, but I do love LinkedIn because it's, it's a great tool and a powerful tool and it's free. So you know, it's great to use. Now, as um, you just said, um, Connectfluence is, is a sort of term I've come up with. I, I made up the word um, about a year and a half ago. And it's really the art of connect, connecting to influence and make an impact. And the, this is my me methodology for my trainings and my coaching programs. But essentially, the framework is, it's about energizing your presence, which is building your profile. It's who you're being on LinkedIn, who you're being online, establishing your credibility, which comes from what you're doing, and earning influence, which is you know, your engagement. So who you're choosing to engage with and how you're doing that. So let's start with, you know, why, why would you use LinkedIn? And firstly, actually, just a quick, um, if you want to put a note in the chat, does anybody not have a LinkedIn profile? Well, hopefully you all, you all do, but if anybody's willing to say, share that they don't yet, I, I'd love to know, and then hopefully I'll inspire you to get started. So hopefully, um, and also feel free to put your links to your LinkedIn profile in the chat so that, you know, we can all connect to each other, um, particularly if you're not, you know, if there are people in this room that you're not connected to yet, because sometimes it's useful to do that. So one of the reasons to use LinkedIn is, is it, it's the largest professional social network with over 700, well, around 740 million users around the world. So see, these are some of the stats that are from LinkedIn as of the end of last month, and they update this often. So it's certainly a platform that's growing, and it grows at two new members a second. But the, the, the main reason I believe you should use LinkedIn is because of its relationship with Google. So it's the 25th most used website or, or visited website in the world, which allows you to rank in Google as well as LinkedIn if you spend some time. So if you've ever looked for yourself, if you've ever Googled yourself, you might find your LinkedIn profile already shows up. And if it's not up to date or representing you well, then you know, it's, it could be letting down your brand. So you want to make sure that it does look good. So um, the, the other stat that I love is in, every year engagement increases 50% on the previous year. Now during that COVID time last year, they reported an, another spike again. So there's a lot more people spending time in LinkedIn. The, the time spent, you know, session time is increasing. People are spending time, you know, engaging with each other, posting content, communicating, messaging, all those things, and it all contributes to this, um, this sort of time in LinkedIn. So I mentioned it's the 25th most visited website in the world. And now my name over here is fairly common. I'll call it common or popular. Um, Joe Saunders, it's, you know, I don't have a very unique name. So, I've, you know, to find me on, on Google could be difficult, but I built up a strong footprint because I'm very active. I'm active on LinkedIn and I'm, I'm, I'm active, you know, in different places. So if you do Google my name, 
Now, it's going to be dependent, obviously, on, on your connection and, what, and your history. Um, but, you know, I haven't tried this, obviously, from Singapore because I'm not based in Singapore. But um, when I do it here and I'm doing it incognito or private browsing, it, um, my LinkedIn profile always ranks either second or third after my website. And then you'll find videos and things like that. So for yourself, Google yourself and see what shows up. See if, you're, if you have a website, is that showing up? Because that's the number one piece of real estate, you, you know, in terms of your ability to control it. LinkedIn, you can control somewhat, but also keep in mind it's not yours. You know, you're, you're renting someone else's property. So while it's, you know, it's a great tool to use, having a website is still um, really important. And then anything else that um, you're using or places you have profiles. And YouTube, I mean, YouTube is owned by Google, so it's another platform to be using. Now, if we start with why um, or how you would use LinkedIn. Now, this framework is from my book, um, Get Good or Get Off, which is a social media strategy sort of book. And this applies to any platform. But if we talk about LinkedIn, where, where you could be using it. So at the bottom of the, the sort of ladder, you might be using it purely as a business tool. So to research, to discover people, to find information, to stay up to date. Next up from that, you might be looking to build a presence for yourself. So you've got a profile and it's got some, you know, some of the right words in. You're looking to build your expertise so that you can be found by you know, your audience, your network. Up from that, you might be looking to build a profile for yourself. So you want to be the go-to. You want to be the trusted expert. But you need to be connecting to the right people. Then up from that, opportunity. So, you know, building relationships with people and that comes from engaging with your network. And at the very top is leads. So you might be looking to convert your connections into clients. But probably the biggest mistake people make on LinkedIn, other than not using it, is to try and do that first. And you've probably seen these people and these messages. So when people jump into LinkedIn, they send you a connection request and then they, 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 then they sort of hit you up with a sales message. And you've, and you've all seen those? They're terrible. They, they, it's not what LinkedIn is designed for. So you don't want to be doing that yourself. But sales is what you're looking for or conversions to something. And maybe, maybe depending on where you are in, on your career journey, you, know, you, you might be looking to, to build this business so you can go full time into it. Maybe you're looking for speaking opportunities and it's being seen by the right people. So if we look at how you're using LinkedIn right now. So there are really four four ways of using LinkedIn. Now, the first one is not a good way, <laughs> uh, being a stalker. So <laughs> stalking is not a, not a great, um, great thing to do, but you can do it. So keeping an eye on um, other people. A lurker, now a lurker is not a stalker, very different. A lurker is someone who's at the bottom of that pyramid. They're consuming information, maybe researching, but they're not being seen. A publisher is someone who's sharing content. Now you, you see those people that just share content. They, sh they have a lot to say and essentially they're talking at their network. But what you really want to do, it's a bit of a combination. I mean, you do need to lurk sometimes because you're researching. You do want to publish content, but you also want to participate and engage in, co in conversation with other people because that's where the true value of LinkedIn is because then it allows you to reach people. And I'm going to show you why. So I'd love to know right now, hopefully there's no stalkers here. Um, are you a lurker, a, pu a publisher or a participant or a combination of all? So feel free to put into the chat. Um, but if you, if you are a person who is, is lurking, you know, you, you consume the home feed, you, you read the information and you might, you might get a lot of value from it, but you're not, you're not sort of engaging in conversation, then think, you, you, hopefully at the end of this presentation, you'll see where the value is. Because if you don't put yourself out there, you're under, under the water line in terms of this iceberg. You know, if you think of icebergs, you don't see them. So no one sees you. Whereas you want to be above the water line, you want to be seen. And content, publishing content, allows you to be seen as a thought leader, an expert, to share your, your expertise, a specialist, whatever it is for you. But a participant allows you to build relationships. I'm good, good to see there's a few participants here. So, and, and those people who are lurkers, well done for admitting that. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with it, but hopefully you'll see where it fits into, into your brand as you go forward. Excellent. So yeah, and, publish, and when, when you're publishing, you've got the ability to publish posts, which hit the feed. And then you've got articles, which are kind of like blogs, um, and they're indexed by Google. So, you know, publishing can be multiple, multiple layers to it. So the reason you want to participate or publish is this, and this is how the network works. So you'll notice with LinkedIn, when you look at someone's profile, they've got a number next to their name. It's either first, second, third, or it's beyond. So it might have uh, three plus. So what this means, and why this is really important to understand, is that 
when you connect people, so if I'm connected to, in this, this example, I'm connected to Anna. So Anna is my first level connection. Anna has her own level, you know, network of connections and she's connected to Ben. Now Ben is then second to me because we've got Anna in common. Ben is connected to Chris and Chris is then three degrees away from me and we'll have a third next to his name. Now, why this is important is that when I share some content, so I decide to publish a post on LinkedIn, Anna may see it, depending on the algorithm, of course. If she sees it in her feed, she might decide to comment on my post. What she's doing then is amplifying it forward to her network. So in the feed of Ben, he, it might, it, he might see that Anna has commented on my post. Ben may decide to comment on my post as well to join the conversation, thereby exposing it to his network, which inc includes Chris. So I hope you understand the, the, you know, the, the importance of publishing content. And now publishing content can, you know, can be sharing your own posts, it can be creating content, it can, it can be text, it can be videos, it can be images. But it can also be curating content. So it can be sharing links to content that you found on the web with your insights. That's, that's just as good. And then you're allowing people to get to understand who you're about. Yes, yeah, it's, a, it's a, mul a multiplier effect, exactly. So that's your content. Now, if you're engaging with people in your network, so if I'm, you know, I'm connected to Anna, I might see a post that Anna shared in, in her feed. Um, sorry, through her, through her profile, it hits my feed. And I comment on her post. Well, I'm actually amplifying her post to my network because my network will see um, that I have commented on it potentially. So I'm exposing her to my network, which, which might introduce her to new people. But also my comment on her post is going to be seen by her network. Once again, it might be seen by Ben and other people. So you're, you're raising your awareness of your brand. So if you're, you're a very busy person and LinkedIn's, you know, a lot of time for you, the one thing I would do is participate, is engage with other people's content. And it's the picking the right people to engage with, the, the people who are either your ideal clients or they know your ideal clients or their um, influencers or, or of you know, your area of expertise. If you're looking to get, you know, to get speaking gigs, well, you'd be engaging with people that organize these events. So it's picking the right people. So hopefully that makes sense. Any questions at this point? There's nothing in the chat, so I can't see anything, but feel free to jump in. Now, first I want to talk about your LinkedIn profile because now you understand how this works. You know, if you're raising awareness and visibility of your profile, you want to make sure your profile's up to date and looking good. So you want to, what, what I like to call, energize your presence. Now, your profile is part of your personal brand, and this is a definition, you've, you may have heard this already from Jeff Bezos, it's quite a well-known um, quote, but you know, your brand is what other people say when you're not in the room. Now, now the, you know, the room isn't just physical, it's online, and the room, you know, LinkedIn is a room. So it's what people are seeing about you, but really it's what people feel about you when they see your profile, they're reading your information, they're watching videos and, and looking at your content, how does it make them feel about you? And you know, you can influence that, you can't control it, but if you put the right information out there, it's gonna help them understand what you do. So your LinkedIn profile, um, these are seven sort of areas you wanna think about. So I'm just gonna run through them. So you've got your digital footprint, and I'll show you what that means. But essentially that comes up, that, that comes from your name, your headline, and your photo. Those three things follow you everywhere on LinkedIn, and that's what people see first. So if you haven't got a photo on your profile, you know, people can't connect to you, they can't see you. So it's like being on a Zoom call and you've got your camera off. Now, you know, it doesn't really matter too much in this situation, but if I'm looking at, um, I can see Linda Tan, I can just see your name, I can't see you. Um, and if that was you on LinkedIn and you haven't got a photo, then people can't connect to you. So you wanna make sure you've got that. And you've also got the positioning statement, which I'll go, I'll go into more detail. There you go, Linda's put a camera on now. <laughs> Hello, Linda. <laughs> I didn't want to put you on the spot. I'd, but an example of, you know, we can't see you. Um, but it doesn't matter too much in this call. But yeah, anyway, um, that's all good. Thank you, thank you for that demonstration. But now we've seen Linda. Now we've got a better, you know, a different connection if we can see her face. Um, your contact info. So just having, and it sounds really basic and, um, you know, obvious, but having your phone number, your email address, whatever contact info you want, your, your websites, having that information in there. Sharing your journey, because that helps position you as an expert. So, you know, as a coach, what, what brought you to this? What have you studied? Um, what, you know, what other experiences have you had before doing what you're doing now that, that helped, helped frame that or the industry you've worked in? 
branding. So, you know, do you have, and this, you know, comes down to colors, you know, what are your brand colors? Do you have a logo? Um, all those sorts of things. Um, credibility comes from your expertise. So, you know, what, once again, do you have qualifications? Are you a certified coach? Is there a, a specific thing you've got? Um, have you got all the right skills on your profile? And then have you got your keywords on your profile? So there, there are certain places you want to make sure all those words are in your profile so that you're found for the right thing. And then finally, social proof. Now, social proof comes in the form of recommendations, so which are kind of you know testimonials. People have said things about you. And then you've got endorsement of your skills where people have pretty much said, yes, you can do that thing. So that's your profile in a nutshell. And I'm going to go into it in a little bit more detail. Uh, but I go through this in my in my courses and workshops. But I'll go through the, the important parts. Now, the, the number, like I said, your the number one part of your profile is your headline. Now, this is these three things make up your digital footprint, your name, your headline, your photo, because they, they show up everywhere. So your photo is representing you visually. Now, this is this screenshot from my previous um, update. I've updated my profile photo because I've I changed my hair color quite a lot. <laughs> so I had a new photo shoot with blonde hair. Um, but you know, it could be blue next week. It could be pink next week. Who knows? <laughs> so I've got lots of photos I change when I change my hair color to make sure it matches me. But essentially it needs to look like you and be recognizable. So I mean, I, th I think this photo still looks fairly much like me, you know, other than having a different hair color. Um, but if your photo is old and out of date, you know, you used to have long hair, now you've got short hair, or it, you know, it's from 10, 15 years ago when you were a bit younger. Um, yeah, just make sure it does look like you and represent you. And does it create the right feeling? Is it you in business as opposed to you on the weekend, uh, you know, you at a social gathering or with your family or you've got a person with you, so it wants to be just you. Excellent. Um, so that's your image. And then we've got the headline. So this is the most important piece of text on your profile. So your headline is this text under, underneath here. And so I'm going to go into what that can look like. So you've got a hundred, a 220 characters to write about yourself, to position yourself. Now, I, I did a quick search before. You'll see on the screen here, it's got um, search. I searched for coach and Singapore. That was just the two criteria. And you'll see a list of people that came up in search from my perspective. So I don't know if anybody, any of these people are here in the room. Um, but you'll see here the importance of a digital footprint. So all I can see on you know, on first look is the name, the headline and the photo. So some people I can't see their photos. So either they've got no photo or they've got their photo set to private, which is not really useful for LinkedIn unless you're quite um, protective of your identity. But um, not having a photo, it's kind of like going to a networking event with a bag on your head. Um, and I do actually, when I speak on stage, I actually get volunteers on stage and put a brown paper bag on their head and, um, you know, just for fun. <laughs> actually, I did that last night. At, um, I, ran, I ran an event here in Perth and we were talking about first impressions with photos. So I had a photographer um, share some tips and I had some volunteers with bags on their heads. So <laughs> you'll probably see some photos um, coming up soon with that happening um, in my own LinkedIn feed. So that's your photo. But you'll see it with the headline. This is the bit of text here. So you've got the first one here. It's got leadership coach, next one leadership, um, I'll just look over here because it's a bit bigger, uh, leadership coach, facilitator and counsellor, youth leadership facilitator, author, coach, author, executive coach, job coach. So can you see the importance? Where I've put coach, all of these results, they have the word coach in their headline. So in terms of search, the headline is the first place LinkedIn looks to for whatever you're looking for. So you want to make sure that whatever you do, Whatever you want to be known for, it's in your headline. Now, coach is quite a broad um, search term and there are lots of different types of coaches. So to test it out, you know, if, you, if you're an executive coach or you're a business coach or you're a life coach, you know, whatever co type of coach you are, make sure that, that those words are in your profile so that when people are looking for that thing, you potentially show up. So that's the importance of your headline. Now, by default on LinkedIn, when you add a role to your experience section, which is further down, there's a little tick box and it encourages um, you to put your title as your headline. And you don't want to do that because your headline is your positioning statement. It's important for search. It's important for findability and positioning. So that's the default way from LinkedIn title organization, which when you work in a, you know, when you've got a job and you work in an organization, that can be you know, fairly useful. But when you run a business or, when you're, or whether you're a consultant, 
you want to share your expertise. So this is my sort of one of my frameworks for writing this. So instead of your title, which might be business owner or CEO or, or just or coach, I mean, you want to put your expertise. So whatever kind of coach you are, so say leadership coach, business coach, whatever, and then an outcome. So what outcome do they get from working with you? So I have to think about what that is. Then you could put your organization name if, you, if it's something you want to promote and raise the awareness of. And then something about your brand. So if, does, does anybody want me to have a look at their profile and give you some feedback on yours? Irene, I can see your thumbs up. Okay, great. Can you just put your, your link into the chat um, just now so I can click on it um, and it's easy? Now, James is asking, uh, these coaches are all number two to you. Yep, so when I do a search, it's going to look through my network. So if I have people who are first level to me, it's probably going to show those first, but not necessarily. Um, and second obviously gets second priority. So generally, that's, that's just how it is. Then you'll see some thirds. But it also depends on what, what you're searching for. Now that, like I said, coach is a very generic term. But if I was searching for something really specific, there could be people who are three degrees away from, from me who come up first for that specific term. So it's part of the search um, algorithm, but it's not, you know, the be all and end all. Right. So let's go to Irene's profile. Thank you for being a volunteer. It's always um, good to have volunteers. So Irene, from yours, I can see straight away, you've got managing director at Coaching Alliance Group. And if I scroll down to your experience section, it's come from here. So when you added this role, it's picked up your title and your company. So exactly what, link, what I said before, that's what LinkedIn does. But if you think about it, do your clients, do they look for, are they looking for a managing director? No, <laughs> they're looking for what you do. So whatever, so you've got here, um, executive leadership coach. So I would be putting that as your headline and maybe mentor and facilitator. If they're the three mod modalities, three things that you want to be known for. Um, so I'd be, I'd be putting that first and then something around the outcome of working with you. So whatever that looks like. And then you could put your, your name, uh, your business name next. Now, Coaching Alliance Group, you've got the word coaching. So the fact you've got, if you start with executive leadership coach, because then you've got the word coach and, the, and you've got the word coaching, so both variations. Um, so that, yeah, that's um, not a bad way of doing it. So thank you for that. Now, I've probably got some more feedback on your profile, but I'm just going to keep it to headline for now. So thank you very much for volunteering. Now, I'm going to quickly show you what I've done with mine, because um, obviously I follow my own um, frameworks. I don't um, love my profile. So expertise is LinkedIn training, coaching and marketing strategy. So that's my expertise. That's what I want people to find me for. Now, the outcome, just to, just to put this into context, outcome is to future proof your brand. That's what, what you get from working with me. But no one's searching for that. I mean, it'd be very unlikely that someone, you know, sitting there thinking, I want to future proof my brand. <laughs> But it, it just adds a bit of, um, I guess, a bit of flavor or a bit of context to what I do. Now, the, w instead of organization for me, I've got my sort of positioning titles, what let's call them. So LinkedIn Demystifier is um, what I'm known as, as my brand. And then ConnectFluence is my program. So I want that at the forefront rather than my business name. Because my business name, well, it shows up in my profile, but that's sort of what I want to promote. Um, and then I've got uh, the branding element. I've just got my sort of three three things. Actually, before that, sorry, I've got coach trainer and, and coach trainer and keynote speaker. Actually, that needs a comma in there because um, that's what I want to be known for. So if so someone's looking for a keynote um, speaker, I want to come up in search for that. But the brand part is energize your presence, enhance credibility and, and influence because they're the three things I talk about. Once again, I wouldn't expect people to be looking for that. This is more for people once they've landed on my profile to give them a bit of context in terms of what I do and how I'm different from another LinkedIn trainer. Because if, as a coach, I mean, co coaching is a, quite a competitive space, isn't it? And you're all essentially, co I guess, co competition, um, depending on what you do. So, um, yeah, you, you want to add your flavor so that someone can look at your profile, Irene, or your profile, I Ivy, and connect to you. Because, you know, your clients are going to connect to you. They go, and you, your profile then acts as almost a filter because I'm not for everybody. I mean, if someone might look at my profile and go, who is this crazy, colourful-headed lady? And they might be quite conservative. 
I'm not for them and that's okay. Now I'll just mention something else um, in terms of branding. So you've got your name, your, your, your headline and your photos, your, your sort of digital footprint. But you'll see at the top here, there's this background image. Now this image allows you to add a bit more context and it's seen when you go to your profile. So as I mentioned, I change my hair color quite a lot. <laughs> so to combat that, I've got this image with me with lots of different hair colors. Um, just to show that I'm, I am quite colorful. Um, it shows a bit of brand energy. So there I am with sort of red hair with purple on the end. I've got blue hair here. Uh, this is my most recent photo um, wearing swimming goggles because I, I, I like to swim and I'm doing, a, you know, I like to sort of have a bit of fun. Um, then you can see me in a classroom training and speaking on stage as well. I've actually spoken in Singapore um, a few years ago. I spoke at the um, Asia Professional Speakers Conference. So yeah, so I have, have been and um, would love to come back to Singapore once all this craziness settles down. So what, but also what I've done here is I'm, I'm showing how I work. So I'm showing I speak on stage. I'm showing I, I train. And this one's obviously a close up on stage. So that's me with, with um, someone with a bag on their head, as I mentioned, um, just to show that bit of context. So for yourself, could you create a almost a montage of the way that you work like showing you working one-on-one -on -one with the client showing you in a classroom if you if you do that if you do group coaching um maybe you could be sh showing that you work virtually you know there could be a photo of you and your setup so you know there's a lot of um, creative things you can do awesome all right i'm just going to go back to slides now um now, Irene, you've just asked me uh, why your photo doesn't show up on your screen. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Did you mean on the profile? Let me go back. Oh, on the yeah. profile here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking at this and thinking, huh? That's not what I see on my screen. Ah, so what, okay. Uh, what are other people seeing? Yeah, perfect. So good question. So I would check your profile settings because you might have got your profile photo set to only connections only. So we're two degrees away, so we have a mutual connection. So yours would be set to public, I would say. So I'm gonna show, I'll go back to my profile and just show you where that is. I mean, there's, there's a couple of ways to find it, but um, if you're on your profile and you click on your photo, see here, mine says public. And if I click on that, here are all the options. So you've got public, all LinkedIn members, your network, which is um, three degrees away from you, your connections, or, and that's it. So Irene, yours might be set to connections, which is like the lowest um, level of visibility. So just double check because I'm not a connection of yours, but I'm definitely in your network. So it must be set to that, I would say. So if, if you want to have it public, you know, make it public. Sort it. Thank you. That's exactly Excellent. the problem. Perfect. No. Now, yeah, and you, and you wouldn't know because you never look at your profile from the outside in, do you? You look at your profile when you're logged in, so you never see what other people see. Um, so if anybody ever says they can't see your photo, just check your settings. And LinkedIn sometimes, you know, likes to ch reset things and sometimes they'll reset the settings. So that, that's why that happens. Um, so always check your visibility. Now, keep in mind, if it's public, it's indexed by Google. So when you go to Google Images, so say you're searching for your name and you go to Google Images, that just means your photo will, you know, could show up in Google Images. Now, if you're building a brand for yourself, then, you know, you don't mind that happening. Um, but if you're quite a, a private person, then this is when you might cho choose one of the other options within LinkedIn. But generally, you want people to recognize you. Um, you know, if, if you go to physical networking events, people will recognize you by what they see when you walk into the room. Um, it's the same on LinkedIn. So that's that. Excellent. So, but really good questions. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I'm sure that um, might apply to somebody else. So that we've talked about headline now. We've talked about the digital footprint. Let me just get out of there. So here's a, just a couple of examples of, of those headlines um, in different ways. Now, the framework I've just shared with you is only one of the, my frameworks, you know, but there are other things you could do. I mean, this lady, Annie, um, you know, I guide executives and project leaders to build their project capability and lead sustainable project transformations. And she's the author of a book. She's a project coach and facilitator. So she's got the keywords she wants to be found for. And she's got a statement that positions her in terms of what she does and the out, you know, how she works and the outcome of working with her, but just in a different way. Um, then you've got um, David, um, speaking and pitch coach, meetings advisor, impartial chairperson for difficult meetings, meeting diagnostics. You know, so a lot of things that he does put together in a sentence um, 
uh, and this guy, Peter, a um, client of mine who does estate planning, wills and enduring power of attorney. So he's got all the, the words that people might be looking for. And then he's got his business name at the end. So you're having your business name is, is a personal choice. It depends on, I mean, Peter's business here, he's got multiple people in the business. He's got a team and his business name sort of has the keywords in it anyway. Whereas um, this lady, Annie, she's a consultant, a project manager. So for her, she probably operates under her own name. And if she had a business, it's probably more important to, to promote her book rather than a business name. So it's all about positioning. So hopefully that makes sense. And as I mentioned, your, that your visual branding now, um, if you want to create your own background image, like you know, similar to what I've done here, I've used a tool called Canva. I'm not sure if you're all familiar with it. It's a, a fantastic tool. It's free. Um, I, I use a paid version because it's got more uh, functionality, but it's very cheap. Um, and, and interestingly, the uh, founder of Canva is from Perth, where I'm from. So yeah, I don't know, her. but um, that's where she's from. So it's nice to have an Australian tool that's gone global. Um, it's fantastic. Now, if you're creating an image, I mean, you could be using, um, you know, the Adobe suite, which I also use. These are the dimensions of the image. Now, when you click on the pencil here, it used to give you the dimensions and they've taken it away. So don't know why, but these are the actual dimensions if you're creating something specific. So 1584 by 396 pixels. But you can, there's nothing wrong with putting one single image in there, like a photo you've taken, and then just positioning it. Right, so let's talk about your title and your experience now. And now I've talked about Google a little bit. Now, when you Google your name, and you're very welcome to try this if, if my name happens to come up, when, when, you search, when you, your LinkedIn pr uh, profile comes up, so this is the Google results for me. It will say Joe Saunders dash LinkedIn trainer, LinkedIn training for dot, dot, dot. Now this statement, LinkedIn trainer, comes from my title in my experience. Now, um, Irene, you had managing director as your title in your first role. So your, your name is going to say Irene Sim dash managing director, which is not going to help you. <laughs> I mean, it shows that you're important. You're the leader in your business. But if your is your business just, just you? Hi. Uh, no, it's a small, it's a, it's a small practice that my husband okay. and I. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Now the, the, but the focus so, ought to be on me, not on the business. Yeah. Now, the, the only reason um, a title might be important is if you're part of a company and your, you know, your role or seniority is important. And to, but more, more importantly, it's important to your clients. So I was talking to a client this week um, and she works with academics and senior leaders. And f for her, it's really important for her to have those things in, like CEO in her profile because that's who they want to talk to. So they're talking on the same level. So it's about understanding your audience. So there's no right and wrong, but just know that, yeah, that title comes up in Google and it sits next to your name. So for me, having LinkedIn trainer is perfect because that's the, one of the keywords I want to be found for. So it's the first role in your experience. Now, if you move things around, which you can, or you change it, it takes a, a short while for Google to re-index it, but it will change eventually. So that comes from there. Now, the other thing to notice is the bit of text underneath here, where it's got Joey's a pragmatic and knowledgeable about blah, blah, blah. That text, um, I've done a bit of research here. Now, this bit is a bit challenging to work out because sometimes it pulls the text from your headline. Sometimes it uses the about section. Um, sometimes it will use experience and sometimes it will even use a recommendation. So this one comes from, at the time, it was my third recommendation. Now it's about fifth. Um, so you can see here, Joe is very pragmatic and knowledge knowledgeable. That's what it's come from. So it's picked that text now. Um, I've talked to a lot of a lot other LinkedIn experts and I've tried to, um, you know, reverse engineer this and work out why it's doing that and how you can control it. And I don't know, so I can't answer that one. So what you need to know is it's random um, and it can pick each either of these sections. So you want to make sure your headline is optimized. You want to make sure your about section is optimized. You've got some recommendations you know, and you know, your experience is optimized. So just make sure your profile's up to date and it will then work for you. So that's what, that's the um, learning. And if I do find this out, I'll be writing a blog about it because I'd love to know um, how you can influence that. Now, any other questions? Are we good? Nope, just keep sharing your information. That's great. Now, something else I want to talk about with your profile, and this is a fairly new feature. Um, it was released last year. It's the audio feature. Now, this is a feature designed, it sits next to your name. You can see there's a little icon next to my name, a little um, speaker symbol, and it allows you to say your name. Now, this is great if you've got a challenging or unusual name. If people are always getting your name wrong, like sometimes I get called Joe Sanders and it's Joe Saunders. 
So it allows me to say my name. I mean, my name's fairly simple apart from that. Um, but what you can do, you've got 10 seconds, you can record your name and you can also say what you do potentially. Um, you know, use it for a bit of positioning or add something fun, you know, a bit of personality because people can hear you. So to do this, you can't do it on the desktop version. You've only got to, you can only do it on the mobile app. So you, you go into the mobile app, you go into your profile to edit it, where the little pencil is up, up the top here, you click on that. And there'll be a little, there's a spot to record um, your audio pronunciation. So you can record it, check it. If you like it, you can save it. If you don't, do it again. So a few examples, uh, these people, you're very welcome to look them up. Um, a guy called Reg Sorrell, he's a video producer here um, that I work with. He's got a great one. Um, Harry Bozen is another um, client of mine and he's got a great one. He's a mortgage broker. Now this lady here, and I can never get her name right. I call her Gia because that's, that's how she introduces herself. So her name is quite long and it, you know, for, for, for someone who doesn't, is of, isn't of her culture, it might, you know, I don't, I don't like to get it wrong. I like to actually hear it. So she's got her name, just her name recorded. And it's great because if I'm meeting with her and I want to say her name right, because I think, it, I think it's important to get someone's name right. I can listen to her name and then, you know, practice it or give it a go. So, you know, it's, it's a good tool for researching other people, but also for yourself. So that's a, um, a great feature. Now, something else I want to mention on, pro, on your profile, there's a section called People Also Viewed. It sits to the right of your profile. Now, this is our prime minister here in Australia. You may be aware of him. Um, and this is not a political discussion by any means, but I'm going to use his, him as an example. So he's got this section turned on. Now, he's got in his list, he's got um, other political people, some in his party, from, some from the other parties, who are, I guess, technically competition. Um, he's got some business person. He's got an actress from Home and Away, if you know that show. Um, he's got a promotional model who looks like she's in a bikini, um, you know, and a range of different, and then a, a cricket player. Now, some of these people, I mean, Shane Warne hasn't got the best reputation, um, you know. So you're looking at this, the prime minister of our country, and you're looking at this list of people. Now, all this means, it's down to the algorithm. It just means that either those people have been in conversations with him or, and people happen to have looked at their profile before or after him. Maybe they've come up in search results. You know, there are many different factors. But the, the point of this is, is people come to this profile and they're judging him based on the people showing up. They're going to make their own assumptions. Some people will think that he, he knows them, he's endorsed with, he endorses them, they're friends, whatever. I mean, I've asked a few people what they think. So it's always safest to turn it off because you can't control this list of people. So, you know, suddenly your, comp your competition could, could show up in your profile or someone who you don't trust or you haven't got a good relationship with. So to turn, and I call them squatters. <laughs> because they're squatting on your profile. They're taking up real estate. They're like little ads for other people. And there could be other coaches, you know. So to turn that section off, which I recommend for most people, is you go to the little me icon at the very top, the little circle, and go to settings and privacy. And then you're looking down the um, results here under profile information. And if you scroll down here, down the bottom, it's got viewers of this profile also viewed. You click into that and you just simply turn it off and you get rid of them. So that's what I recommend for most people. Um, the only time I'd recommend turning it on is, or leaving it on, is if you work for a large organization and all your team are showing up, or they're very influential people that are going to look good for you. But it changes fast, so you've got to keep on top of it. And if some, someone shows up who's not um, a good fit for your brand, then it might be good to turn off. Excellent. So that's all I'm going to talk about on profile for now. Um, I'm going to share with you my LinkedIn profile blueprint, which has got sort of my, all my frameworks that I, when I'm working with clients that I use. So that'll, that'll give you some, some homework to do. Um, did you know there was homework? <laughs> yes, you've got to have homework. Otherwise, you know, we're just having a nice time. So you can use that um, to have a go yourself. Now, if you do need some help, of course, you can, um, you know, engage me to help you. But I want you to be upskilled to, you know, to give it a go yourself because you know your brand. Now, I want to talk next about um, networking on LinkedIn. So that's because that's where the real value is. And what I like to call earning influence, because you've all heard of um, influencers and I believe everybody is an influencer in some way, but you've got to earn influence. You've got to have an ability to influence by, you know, having great content out there and helping people and building relationships. So if we start with, now we understand how the network works. We know those, how those three degrees work. Now, the more people you're connected to, 
who are the first level, the more people you've got access to, the more people might see your content. But you want to be strategic about it. You don't want to connect to everybody because connecting to, um, I don't know, someone who owns, owns a fashion store in the US may be no relevance to you, unless you coach business owners in the US in fashion, then, then it is. So it's, it's working out who's right for you. So some of the types of people you might want to think about connecting to, not just the clients, the end client that you're going to work with, but also organizations. Who are the decision makers in the organizations? You know, their team members, their, uh, your peers. So it might be fellow coaches that you might collaborate with and coaches that um, share some great content that you can engage with, which is going to help your network. Um, people that you know you can learn from people that are way ahead of you like you know world leading coaches you know because they they might have a following that you can tap into um oh, pmi board this is a, this is a slide from a client uh, ignore the word pmi any board you're on essentially so if you're a, on a committee or a board people who are board members uh, people that you work with uh, friends partners of projects suppliers Presenters, if you go to events or you, you know, you go to conferences or you're listening to presentations like this, you might want to connect to them. Mentors, mentees, um, recruiters, if you're in the job market or you're looking to recruit for your business, people you meet. But influences of any of those people, because if you understand that there's three degrees, anybody who's connected to those people, you've got access to them. So it's just working out who they are for you. Now, I just had a quick question um, asking about the squatters again. Now, I'm, going to, I'm just going to quickly go back to that. I'm just going to show you live because it might be good to demonstrate. So um, on a profile, you've got people also, also viewed. I'm just going to go quickly back to um, Irene. So Irene, you've got, it, you've got it turned on at the moment. So people also viewed. Um, there's five people you can see, but when you click show more, it will show all the 10 generally. Oops, I've clicked on someone else's profile, but yeah, you can see here, she's got all the 10 here. So, um, and it, it tells you the relationship. So are they second, first, are they third? Um, if they're, if they're um, a first level, you, could, you can um, message them. If they're a second, you can connect. And if you're a third, you can message them potentially. Um, now to turn them off, you go to me. You're going to settings and privacy. And we'll go back up to account preferences and then people also viewed. You can see here. And you're just turning the slider to no. Does that answer your question? Is that good? Um, Joe, I yep. um okay, so in the profile, as you are speaking, sorry. Yeah. Um okay, so it's under feed preferences, right? No, not feed preferences. You're looking under account preferences. Uh sorry, uh, account preferences and then uh, profile information and yep. then in there, if I look at what you have on your screen is feed preferences and then people also view. Am I correct? Yeah, so it's a one under feed preferences. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And also while I'm here, I mean, have a look through these settings and just see what options you've got. I mean, this is probably the, the most common one I go to to help people um, yeah, take control of their profile. So you haven't got those, ex those dis people distracting on, on your mm -hmm. profile. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problems at all. Right, so let's just go back to here. So yeah, so we're talking about the um, people to connect to. So when you're getting incoming connection requests, work out what your criteria is. Are they a good fit for you or are they going to sell to you? Um, I had someone today connect to me um, and it was a very, it was a, he sent a personal message with it, but I could tell he's gonna sell to me. Um, he runs a, fr a franchise company and he just said, um, people with your experience do really well as franchises for our business. Um, you know, and then he sort of said, would you like, I'd love your email or phone number. Well, firstly, my email and phone number are actually in my profile and they're actually in the about section. So it's public. So if he wanted to email me, he actually could. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking he's sort of doing this in volume, like inviting a lot of people this way. I'm not going to connect to someone like that because I'm not interested in have, running a franchise business in, I think it's in the property market. Um, so, you know, it's not related to me. So you, you want to be strategic. So I've got quite a large network, but I only connect people now that I can see there's a synergy with either I, you know, either I know of them, they know of me, um, they're in a space, in a similar space, or they're in a location I want to work with. So there's certain criteria um, and there's certain people I won't connect to. So if they're working in web development and they're in the US, I say no, because generally they're going to be spamming me. Um, I know that's quite general, generalizing, but 
I don't need any web people in the US and that, that's just how I work. So, and you'll learn you, from your own experience as to which industries are not a good fit for you, uh, which types of people and trust your instincts too. Because you know what, you could say yes to everybody in the first instance and I used to do that. I'd say yes to probably three quarters of people. Um, but then what will happen is you'll build this network which is very broad. So when LinkedIn is suggesting people and showing, showing you content, it's going to be quite, you know, quite broad. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> and it's not going to be helpful for you. So the more strategic you can be, the better. Now, once you've connected, actually, I'll just decide one on connections. Um, I mean, one of the reasons you want to be strategic is there is a limit to how many connections you have, which is 30,000. Now, 30,000 sounds like a lot, and it is. It's a, it's a big number, but you don't want to have that many people because it's really difficult to manage 30,000 people. And if you do hit 30,000, you're going to be full. So one of my colleagues here, um, she's got 30,000 connections, and she messaged me to ask, how can she remove people easily to, so she can have space for new people? Because you can't extend that. You can't get more people to um, – you can't say yes to people. So you might be at an event with your ideal clients, and you can't accept them. Um, so that, yeah, it becomes a bit of a challenge. I think you'll need a virtual assistant to actually do that for you, which, you know, is a job that doesn't need to exist. <laughs> so being strategic in the first place is, is important, um, and having the right people. Now, when you've got the people in your network, well, what do you do with them? So how do you network? So these are the sort of three ways that you can network. So you can simply like an update, which I, I'm saying here is, it's like a nod of agreement, um, and it's the easiest thing you can do. But if you hover over where the like is, you've got these reactions, which adds a bit more context. But what you really want to do is have a comment, add a comment to the conversation, because now you're in a conversation, you're sharing your, your views, and you're raising awareness of your brand. Now, the comment's not salesy. It's not a, um, oh, I've got a coaching program for you. you here's a link. Don't do that, because <laughs> that's not going to be uh, received very well. It's asking questions and participating adding value because then you attract people to your profile who are interested in what you do anyway and you're reaching then their network and you're exposing the conversation to your network so only join conversations that are going to match your brand so that's networking now then you've got nurturing so how do you then you know keep in touch with people what can you do with people who are potential clients potential partners so you can view their profile now, when you view someone's profile, they know you viewed their profile generally, unless you've changed your settings around, which is a good thing because if you've got someone who's a potential client and you view their profile, then it, it's showing an interest in them. They might view yours in return. So that's something you can do. So if you've got a connection on LinkedIn, um, maybe a previous client or someone you'd like to be, you know, get on board as a client, maybe look at their profile, see what they're sharing, but leave that footprint behind so that they, they might get in touch with you. You might um, engage with their, co with their content. So as I was saying before, commenting is, is a great um, activity to do with the right people. You might share their content with your network. So if someone's written a blog or maybe they've produced a video on the YouTube channel, you might share that as a post on your profile, tag them, so give, give them credit, but also alert them you're talking about them, and share your takeaways because it might be valuable to your network. So it's, it's you know, great for relationship building. You might share content with them. So say you found um, an interesting blog, or maybe you've published a blog about a particular topic and you think it might be of interest to, to this, you know, this person, then you might share it via message with them. And the other thing to do is inviting them to events. So it could be your events that you're running or events that you've seen that they might be interested in. So there are things you can do. Now, these are just a few things. There are many other things you can do, but that's just to get you, know, to get you thinking. Now, one thing I like to do is get personal with people that I'm connected to, get to know them a bit better. Um, so what I mean by that is audio messaging. Now, audio is quite big at the moment. You know, there's a lot of audio things. And are any of you guys on Clubhouse? Have you heard of um, Clubhouse, the social network? I, I love Clubhouse. It's a fantastic tool. Um, a lot of people are getting addicted to it and spending a lot of time on Clubhouse. Um, don't do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm being really strategic. I just join rooms where I'm speaking about LinkedIn or the topics of interest. Um, but what it's proving is people want to connect and audio is fantastic. I mean, Zoom's great, but sometimes being on video takes a bit of preparation, you know, whereas audio, you can be in your pajamas. You can be, you know, you can be anywhere. 
and you can be listening. So it's a great tool. So audio is quite popular. Now on LinkedIn, the only place really where you've got audio, I mean, you've got the audio on your name, so you can record your name, but you can do an audio message. So if, and I, I've just done a batch of them today. So I'm running an event um, in April and I've got the event up on my, on, our, on my page and quite a few people have said they're gonna come, but they haven't booked the ticket yet. So what I decided to do was to, to send them a text um, message to say, hi, thanks for your interest in, in my event. Uh, don't forget to book a seat and I've given them the link. And then I send them an audio message because that's personal. The, the text message is a, is a cut and paste. I'm sending that to everybody. It's sort of rather impersonal. But the voice message, you, you press the little audio icon on, on a mobile only. That's the only place you can do audio. Um, so I go to the message, I press the little microphone and I can say, you know, hi, Bob, thanks for your interest in our event. Really looking forward to seeing you there. Um, don't forget to book a ticket and, you know, let, us, let me know if there's anybody else that you might want to bring along. So I can say it with personality and it's, it's less salesy then. And it's personal because I'm, I can't, I can't automate that process. I can't get someone to do it for me, you know, so taking the time to get personal with audio messaging is great. Now, the other thing you can do is video messaging, which is a little bit, little bit more complicated, but the audio message, you hit the audio button, you speak, um, if you, you know, and if you're happy, you send. Video, you could do a little video on your phone, for instance, so I could pick up my phone and I could just say, you know, hi, Bob, nice to, nice to see you, um, blah, 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 whatever the message is, and then send it. Or I could do, a, um, I could create a more of a generic video message without saying their name and um, I could put some, you know, do a little bit of editing if I wanted to. So, you know, like I said, it, it, it can be a bit more complicated, but doing a real in the moment message, whether it's audio or video, allows you to, to build that relationship with people. So it's picking the right people. So if you've got some potential clients that you're, you know, just trying to get on board or you've just met, I would, you know, I would actually take the time to do that. Right, I'm just checking the comments. Um, how do you link a connection who is a, who is a lurker? like someone who starts selling their products. Oh, how do you de-link? Sorry. Yes, good question. So if you've got those people who have been a bit salesy and spammy, I'm going to show you that. Um, right, let me go to just back to LinkedIn. So a couple of ways to do this. So you've got the home feed, you can do it from here. But if it's someone specific, now I'm going to go to... Um, your profile. So if I go to your profile specifically now, keep in mind, you're going to know I'm looking at you because I've got my settings on at the moment. So you'll get a notification to say that Joe has looked at your profile. Now, how I do that from here is I would go to the more button and I would go remove. So that's how I get rid of someone. So um, if you've been spamming me too much, <laughs> I can remove you. Now I'm not going to do that. Um, but keep in mind that, that they will know you're on their profile. So if you're going to do it this way, I would go into anonymous mode and I'll show you how to do that shortly. So the other way to do it is if, if I go into my network and I go into my connections, I can look that way. So you know, if, if it's a person like I said, you know their name, I can do a quick search. So I can just go um, MJ. Let's go in here. Oh, there we go. Um, three dots and remove. So now I'm doing it without being on your, on your profile. I'm not leaving a footprint behind. So two ways to do the removing. Now, other thing you can do is, I'll, I'll go back to your profile. If I'm finding, so that's, that's someone who's a bit spammy and too salesy, or maybe you've, you've accepted their connection request and they're just not a fit. The other thing is I might want to connect to someone, but I might not want to see their content in my home feed. So in that case, you go to more, and unfollow so it means we're still connected i'm just not a subscriber to your content so i'm not, you're not your content won't hit my home feed but i can always come to your profile and you know and find it so i can always go down here and see your activity go here and then see what you're commenting on and what you're posting so there's always that ability but we can still message each other so you can still spam me essentially so you know if i don't want you to spam me like i said i would remove you completely now, if you're looking, if you want to check people out before, you know, and, and make a decision before you um, remove them. So you do need to go to their profile, but you don't want them to know. I'll just show you. So you go to me, back to settings and privacy. And this is the other setting that probably the second most used setting that I will use. This time you're going to go to visibility. 
and you're going to see the top here profile viewing options this is the these are the options when you view someone else's profile what do they see so right now they see me they see my name my photo my headline and once again that, that's why those three things are really important because that gives the context if i'm looking at someone i don't want to know click private and then do your work you go to the profile remove them whatever you want to do and then um, then come back here and turn back to public because you want to be public. You don't want to be operating privately because otherwise people don't know you're looking at them and that's relationship building. So I would definitely do that. So that's how to de-link from someone. So hopefully that answers your question. You can also, if someone is being, um, if, if they're being spammy, but they're also being um, offensive, I mean, you can report and block them as well. Um, let me just go down. I'll just show you in the home feed um, a couple of ways to do this. So this lady, Bella, we're connected. If I go to the three dots here, I can unfollow her here as well. So I don't, I don't need to go to her profile. And I, I do this often. If, if I'm seeing people in my feed that I'm just not interested in their content so much, I'm making room for the people I am interested in more because I can always go back to their profile. So I can unfollow. Um, I can report the post, like say if that post was offensive or there was something about it that was wrong. Um, but I can also report the person. So I could go to her profile. If I'm going to do that, I probably would go into anonymous first, just so I'm not flagging that I'm on her profile. Now, I don't, I don't know her that well, and I wouldn't do that. But you go to more, um, so you can see down here, unfollow, connect, report, and block. So if I click there, um, I can block her. I can report the profile. I can report a photo as well. So they're the options. So, but think before you do that, you know, you, it, it needs to be some, something serious in order to, to, to be doing that to somebody because it, it affects their brand as well. Right, so let me go back to where we were. So we talked about um, sending audio and video messages, getting personal. Now, I just talked about cleaning up your, your feed. So as I said, when you're on your feed, often people will say to me, oh, LinkedIn's, my LinkedIn feed's really boring. I'm seeing stuff that I'm not interested in. Um, there's a lot of you know stuff that's just you know, not for me. So you want to clean up. Now, LinkedIn has an algorithm. It's going to show you content it things you're interested in. And... So showing you content from people in your network, companies you follow, but also content that you engage with. So that's a trigger for, for that interest. But if you're seeing stuff you're not interested in, click the three dots, as I said. So you can ignore, unfollow, you can mute if if this is a shared post. So if if you sh if someone like this, this example, Reg had um, commented on somebody else's content. So you can mute the other person's content. So I can still see Reg, but I don't I'm not I might not be interested in the person he's commenting on. You can provide feedback as well. So one of the updates to the algorithm, oh, it was last year now, um, it's giving posts a longer lifespan. But some of the content might be about something that's happening now. So it's, it's you know, it's um, not evergreen. It's sort of, it's seasonal and it's happening now. And you, you'll see events like, um, don't forget to book a ticket to our event today or tomorrow. But that was a week ago, so it's too late. So on those types of posts, I might click feedback and then one of the options is this post is old. Um, LinkedIn's algorithm is just not mature enough. And it should be looking for things like last week, today, tomorrow, date. And it's not looking for those things. So, you know, you'll see things in your feed that's just a little bit old. Now, the other thing with the algorithm I want to mention is um, something called dwell time. So one of the reasons you see content in your feed is the stuff that you consume. So thinking about it from the other perspective, the objective is to get people to comment on your updates because that's conversation and exposure. But you want to stop them, stop them from scrolling and spending time on your content. So to one of the best ways to do that, it's a particular type of post. It's called document posts. Now, document posts have been around for a long time, but just in a different format. Um, and what what document posts allow you to do is to, sh to share. You can have a, a single PDF document. But that's not what we're trying to do in this case you want to create a multi-page document that keeps people on your post. So this post here, you know, branding, does your LinkedIn profile, imagery, communicate your brand, blah, blah, blah. There's a bit of text. There's the context about what it's about. But what people can do, you can see the little arrow here, they can scroll through the pages and there's multiple pages in this document, kind of like a slide deck. So you can create these in PowerPoint. You could do it in um, Keynote. Um, you could do it in Canva. So it could be a multi-image multi document. So this one here, LinkedIn launched stories in Australia back in, I think it was June last year. So I created a document post about how to use stories. So I, and I put a little icon to sort of tell people you need to scroll through or click through and lots of bright images, um, small amounts of text because it's 
you don't want to you want people to move through fast um yeah and you can you can create some great stuff and i, I see some great examples so I, I collect examples from other people doing some really cool stuff too but you want to think about it like you're creating like a kid's book you know how kids books are picture books so you've got bright a bright picture and a you know a few lines of text that's what you want to do here because then people will flick through it like a book so I call them carousel posts. Um, other people call them um, sliders. You know, there's different names for them, but it's a PDF and it can be square, it can be rectangular. Generally um, not portrait, because that doesn't doesn't um, look as good on, particularly on desktop. So I go square or rectangular. So that's document posts. Now, just a quick one with document posts. I'll show you how to find them on your, why they're important on your profile. I'll just go to mine. I'm trying to think what, what I've gotten recently. When you go to someone's profile and you go down to the, their activity section. So we, we're going down here, see all activity. You'll see all activity is everything, including comments on other people's stuff. Articles are like blog posts on directly on LinkedIn. And then we've got posts, which are posts on LinkedIn, obviously, and that includes videos and images. So there's no separate tab for those things. Documents have their own tab. So documents, you can see here when they load, um, this one here a week ago. So I created a document post to promote some training that I do over in here for government. So I've created this in Canva. So, you know, crazy image, <laughs> bold image, and a, a bits of text telling, telling people about my upcoming workshops. Um, you know, just the value. You can see bold and bright, not much text, and then that's the link. Now, being a PDF document, I mean, in Canva, you can actually make that a live link, but when you upload it to LinkedIn, it's not a live link. So you need to make sure that in your text, you're gonna put a link in here. So you can see here, I've got, I've got the information here as well, the three workshop dates, I've tagged the organization I'm working with, and there's a link to book, and then some hashtags and tagging some people that are relevant. So that's document posts. Um, here's another one, this has got a bit more, um, bit more text on, but it's a, a workshop I'm doing over here, so, you know, what it's about and a bit more information about it. But what you'll find is because they stop people in the in the feed, it holds the attention, which is great for the algorithm. And you, you'll find then that the views can be, um, you know, fairly, fairly decent and you you might get good comments. Now that one's a bit more, that's a bit more of a promotional type post. Um, but you want to hold the feed. If you hold the attention, because when people are looking at that, they're likely to see your content again. So that's um, post. Now, like I said, on, a, on um, a profile, you don't see images, you don't see video, but documents get a separate area. So it's very easy to find them. Now, I'll just quickly show you um, a guy. He's not my client at all. I've met him on LinkedIn. And I really like his content. Um, he's a graphic designer in the UK called Dave Officer. Very creative guy, and I love his stuff. So this is a document post. Um, there's, there's this feature section where you can pin things to. So I'll quickly show you this one he created. Um, but I recommend you have a look at what he's done and work out how you can do it for yourself. So a bit of text about it, the hashtags, um, but he's done an illustrated guide for working from home that he's created because he's a graphic designer. So you can see here, a bit of text, a bit of a story, you know, bold text, what next? I'm gonna go through it fast, but it's quite funny to read. A um, bit of humor in here, you know, and you can see it's 28 pages. So if I'm actually reading this, I've stopped on this post. And I'm, do, I'm dwelling on this, which is the thing on um, LinkedIn. So can you see the power of this? There's, there's a lot you can do. So if you've got a blog, you could turn it into some quite visual content. Now, if you're not creative yourself um, or, or you're time poor, you might get a virtual assistant to do some of this for you. But if, you know, you can use, um, like I said, Canva is a great tool to do this. So I highly recommend giving that a go. So that's document posts. Now, in terms of content, uh, you want to find your voice. So for those people who are lurkers and not sharing, think about what value you can add. Always think about your ideal client, your ideal audience. So as I've said, you can you can react to other people's content. You can add a comment to other people's content, but you can also start your own. So the, the home page at the top, you'll see this box here, start a post. You can hit photo, video, document, article. So we've showed you document. Videos, um, short is be shorter, you know, the shorter you can be, the better. You want to be to the point, no waffling on and keep it snappy because people won't watch long videos. And the only indication you have with LinkedIn as to how many, how much watch it's had is if someone watches it for three seconds, that's deemed a view. Now they could watch it for three seconds. They could watch the entire video. You, you don't know who, who's watched how much. It, it's not like YouTube that tells you when people start dropping off. So 
Um, shorter is better. So say what you need to do quickly. Now, if you've got lots, lots of long videos and you've got a YouTube channel, you might create a short snippet to promote your video on YouTube. And then in the text, you might say, watch the full video here and link to it. So that's video. Now video, you can be, it can be you on camera. It can be you, um, your voice over screen. So I, I do a lot of, um, you know, new features on LinkedIn and I might do voiceover and do a screen recording. You could do an animated video. So a tool like Canva, once again, um, you might create some animated images and have voiceover or just have music or have movement. So video, you know, video doesn't have to be you on camera if you're a little bit nervous about doing that. But that's a nice way to, to create some connection with your, with your audience. Now, the other one is polls. And I briefly had one on my, I've shared a poll this morning, actually. But polls are a, a newer feature, um, a type of content. So you create a poll and you know you still need some text to go with it you have a question you have up to four responses and they're a really nice way to get some quick and easy engagement from your audience so you can see here you know this one had 18,000 views um, 221 votes and this is about clubhouse so you know FOMO blah 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 you know just checking in about you know what getting people to, uh, to input what their experience with clubhouse is you know what is clubhouse which is most people going what is it it was quite new at that point um, you know so that's polls and I'll just quickly, I'll quickly go back to my profile and show you the one I did this morning. I haven't looked at the results yet, but um, let me go down here. So polls don't have a separate area. They're just under posts along with videos and images. So here it is here. Um, I only did, did it a short while ago. Hasn't had any votes yet. Now that could be because of time. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me explain this one. This one's actually in an event, so it's not going to hit the home feed. Um, so I'm running an event in April and I decided to add a poll to the event feed. So it's a very specific audience that are going to see this, which is why it hasn't had any interaction yet, which I, I wasn't expect I was expecting to happen. This one here is a public one. So that one has 7,000 views, 180 votes. Um, you can decide how long it's open for. So this one's still open. Five days are left before it's um, closing off. So, you know, now to do a poll, I'll just quickly show you because this is a nice and easy way, particularly if you're a little bit scared of content. Um, you go up here, click into start a post and then you get some more options. And then you've got down the bottom here, create a poll. So you put in your question, put in the two options. You might want to add a third option or a fourth option. Set the duration. How long is it going to last? Um, I'll just go back out of there. And then when you get back to here, you want to have a bit of a blurb about it. The hashtags that relate to the content and then post. And you can set your audience. Is it for anybody to see or is it connections only? Is it a group that you're sharing it with? So you've got um, that ability. Now, just to, going back to questions, Pauline's asking um, if we have different businesses, do we you suggest we have different LinkedIn profiles? No. So LinkedIn, um, if you've... I'm assuming you've all read the user agreement. <laughs> no, probably not. No one reads the user agreement. I do. I like to read it because that's what I specialize in. But um, you can only have one profile per person. Um, so you, you want to work out now if you do different things. Now, often in today's world, people have multiple interests. So they might be doing different things at the same time or they might run a, you know, run a business while they have a job. So you've got to work out what you want to put out there, what you want to be known for and where it fits together. So if you run two different businesses, you got to work out are both businesses for LinkedIn. So say you run a coaching business, but you also own a fish and chip shop. Don't know why I thought of that. Maybe I'm hungry. Um, but your fish and chip shop probably doesn't have any place on LinkedIn. I mean, because you're selling fish and chips to the people local to you. But it might add credibility because if you're a business coach and you run a business, that can add credibility. So it's, you know, it's a, once again, a personal choice. Um, now, LinkedIn has company pages. So you can see on my profile here, there are three pages here. And I'll show you why that's important. So when you have a, multiple businesses, you want to have a page for each business if it's appropriate. So you'll see here, if I scroll down, I've got this business here. Now, this is not actually a business name. This is my identity as a speaker. So Joe Saunders, LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn Demystifier. But I've got these here because I want to be seen separately for different things. So you can have multiple roles in your business or in your, uh, you know, the organization you've set up. So I've got here LinkedIn trainer, connect fluence coach, keynote speaker, and then LinkedIn live host. Where I... Now, the reason I've done all these things is when I do, so I have access to LinkedIn live, which is um, live streaming on LinkedIn. It's invitation only, and it's, it's quite hard to get access to. 
um, you have to apply. But by having this here, I can link to the episodes so it's very easy to find the content. Same with this, interview guest. I mean, that's not a job, it's not a role, but it means it, it shows I'm available to be an interview, uh, interview guest on your podcast, on your show, and I can link to different things I've done. So social proof. This is actually my business name, Wildfire Social Marketing. So I've got Marketing Strategist, Seven Day LinkedIn Challenge. Now, once again, that's not a role, is it? I'm promoting my sort of entry level opt in. So people sign up for my seven day challenge. They enter, you know, the experience. So you can get a little bit creative with it. But I also do other things. So I'm an advisor for a business program over here. So I'm part of this team. So that's there. I host an event called LinkedIn Local Perth, which is the event I did last night. That's got a company page here and there's five of us on the team all connected to the page. I've got a YouTube channel for the, uh, the Connection Couch that has a page as well. So a company page or well, it's now called a page, not a company page. A page can be set up for anything that um, is, a, is sort of a long term project. So if you've got multiple businesses, you would have a page for each business if you want them to be listed on LinkedIn. So hopefully, hopefully that answers your question, Pauline. Right, I'll just go back to my slides. How are we going for time, by the way? Are we good? Excellent, excellent. Um, right. Yeah, we are, we're kind of looking at uh, probably 12, 15 minutes more. Perfect, yeah, that's right. I got to rush for another um, call as well. Yep, yeah, brilliant. All right. So well, I'll just wrap things up shortly then. So uh, the next thing I want to talk about is events. Um, if Do any of you run events? Like if you, yeah, so if you're running events, um, this is a great feature of LinkedIn that's under underutilized and you can run events personally, but the best place to run events is through a business page, through you know your page itself, because you'll see here along the top, you've got, you've got all these different tabs on a page. One is events. Now you can't add the tab, it, it becomes there, you know, it just adds itself automatically once you set up an event. So you'll see on my page, I've got upcoming events. All my workshops are here. And when you click on the events tab, all the workshops are, are listed. So it allows me to promote. I can invite people. So when you click into a workshop, you can, you, you've got your branding. You want to have your, your ba banner for the workshop title linked to the actual booking page. So if it's a paid event or a ticketed event, you'd have the book, booking there. Um, you know, it, it, if it's online, you can put the link. Is it a Zoom meeting? Is it something else? If it's an actual face-to-face -face event, which I mean, we're quite privileged over here to be running face-to-face -face events, you know, because we're, we're in a really good place. Um, you can put the details in there. So, you know, and you can have the speakers. If you've got multiple speakers at your event, you can feature all your speakers. So they're quite powerful. And it means that you can send people to that page. So when you set up the event itself, um, you can do it from the home page. You can go event and then set, select your company page or you can do it from the page itself and just put the details in, as I mentioned, your time zone, you know, all, all the basic information that you want to ca um, capture. Is it public? Is it a private event? And then you'd be inviting people. So that's quite powerful. So I just want to finish with, you know, content, what well, often hear this, this saying, content's king and, and content is king. I mean, in terms of if you want to be seen as a thought leader, as an expert in your field, then you want to share content. But really engagement is queen. And we know who's boss. Queen's the boss, isn't it? You know, females rule the world. Um, <laughs> not really. But it's both. You want to do both. King, queen together. You think of chess, they're sitting next to each other. They've both got their powers. Um, you want to have content. You want to have engagement. Both together just work, work really well, like a horse and carriage or... You know, I'm trying to think of two things that work together saying, but you know what I mean? They're, they're both important. Now, in terms of performance, you want to measure, you want to measure if it's working, because this is something I always want to just add in at the end. Um, there's a thing called your social selling index. I'm not sure if you've come across this, but it's called your SSI score. So when you're on LinkedIn, you go linkedin.com, you type in forward slash S sales forward slash SSI. And then what this does is it gives you a number out of 100. And there's four different areas and you can click in and it gives you, the, it gives you some information. Now, 100 is our high score. The goal is not to get 100. I've never been over 90. Um, that would mean you have no life, you have no business. I mean, you know, we've all got things to do. Where this is important though, it just gives you some um, indication as to how you're traveling along. You know, So if you're over 70, you're deemed an influencer in LinkedIn's language. It shows you how you compare to your industry and that sort of thing. But you know, the other thing is you want to measure, you know, profile views. As you're doing more on LinkedIn, are people paying attention to you? You know, not, not, are they the right people? What, what's the number? Are people connecting to you? Are you getting followers? Because people can follow you 
who are not connected. Um, you know, people messaging you through LinkedIn, are they physically calling you? Are they booking meetings? Are they emailing you? You know, and are you getting new clients? And sometimes it's hard to track that because LinkedIn's part, it's a long game. It's part of, you know, it's part of your marketing, but it's, it's something you might do. You might have a Facebook page or a group and you might be doing, um, you know, YouTube video and you might be doing LinkedIn. So people may experience you across different things. You might have an email list that you said, you know, you, you're communicating with people, but it's just part of it. But um, yeah, but just know there are certain, these are some of the things you can ma uh, manage. But if you're focusing on just how many connections you've got or how many profile views you've got, that's not really the end. It's really the, the conversion to a sale, the conversion to a conversation. They're the things you want to measure. So when you look at your own profile, you'll see a graph. Um, now LinkedIn might have changed this because I've heard some um, some news from other experts who've got haven't got premium that they're no longer seeing this graph. But it used to be, or maybe that. If you've got the free account, you should see the graph, but you can't see, you can only see the last five people that have looked at you. Whereas when you have premium, you can see 90 days worth of data. So yeah, that graph may or may not be there for you right now because um, LinkedIn may have taken that feature away. But you're looking for patterns then. Um, you know, maybe you spoke at a conference and there was a, you know, there was a peak. Maybe you did something, you did a promotion and, and people started looking at your profile. So that just gives you an indication. Now I've talked about um, how to look at, how to be, um, invisible so that you're not showing up when you're checking out your competition so we've already done that so that's it pretty much so we've really covered how to energize your presence your brand and digital footprint how to establish a credibility so you can you know stand out and how to earn influence which is come, comes from relationship building so connect fluence like I said is my methodology and those three areas are the kind of key in the middle and these are sort of the components of my my program so I do run a coaching program. Um, I've got individual and group, group coaching a few times a year. Um, so yeah, feel free to get in touch if you need some help with your LinkedIn. Um, I'm very good at keeping people accountable and just making sure you do what you need to do. But if you just want a quick look at your profile, um, I've got a diagnostic session, which is you know a Zoom call and we pick, we look at your profile in detail, kind of a bit more detail than what I did with Irene, um, You know, looking at the places to improve, giving you direct feedback that you can, um, you can implement yourself. But like I said, you're very welcome to connect to me. That's my details. Um, I'm everywhere, but I only really share my LinkedIn and my website and Clubhouse because Clubhouse is, a, like I said, a platform I'm using quite a lot at the moment. Uh, but I'm on Twitter, you know, I'm on Facebook. I don't love Facebook. Um, I'm, I'm on Instagram and, of course, YouTube. Um, if you look for Joe Saunders on YouTube, I've got a channel there and I've got the connection couch as well. But you are very welcome to connect to me. So hopefully we've gone through most, you know, answered most questions. I haven't seen anything extra. Um, let me just end that. So we should be back to the camera now. So yeah, anything that I haven't covered or anything that's come up that for you? I'd like to acknowledge uh, what an amazing session you have just conducted. And I'd like to acknowledge that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And thank you, James and uh, Suresh, for putting this together. Thank you. I hope no one's overwhelmed. I know we've, we've covered a lot of ground in a short period of time, and hence yeah. I've got longer programs. But I'd love to know what, what was your biggest takeaway or what, and this is for everybody, what you're going to do as a result of this. Otherwise, we've just had a nice time. So, you know, what was your biggest thing that you think, I need to do that? So feel free to put that in the chat or even turn your mic on and um, let me know. Let me just go first. Just, yeah. just take the role on it. Uh, uh, quite a lot, um, e even though uh, this has been something that I've been learning from you uh, through the other webinars. Yeah. I, I found that value, and that's the reason I, went, I invited uh, you here. And um, there were so many. If I were to just mention one, probably the SSI is one. Yeah. I do know SSI, but I've not utilized it. That's the first thing. And the second most important thing is people who have viewed your profile. That's kind of contemplating. And when you showed um, Australian PMs who viewed, that gave me a big eye opener. Hmm, someone who is looking at me might be looking at someone at, with the big knee standing there. That's going to ruin my my branding, isn't it? So that's that's a good takeaway for me. Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, feel free. Don't be shy. Probably, <laughs> probably, um, so probably, yeah, hungry. <laughs> yes, James, go on. 
Yeah, Joe, I've got a comment. Um, first of all, thank you for, there's so much information there that I'm glad that we decided to record it. It was challenging to keep up with some of the things. But, <laughs> But it almost tells me, I mean, a lot, a lot around the, as people have said, the, the get use and don'ts, I think, are very important. But um, as I was thinking all through the session, it's almost LinkedIn profiling is now almost a full time job. Well, it can be, but it, it's one of those things I think once you set it up, I mean, once your profile is optimized, it's just then keeping it up to date. So that shouldn't be too time consuming once you've, once you've done that. But it's, it's doing, yeah, it should be part of your marketing. I mean, if, if your clients are on LinkedIn, it, it, you know, it might be you spend 10 minutes a day or 20 minutes a day or, you know, a few times a week, you, you go in and do certain things, but it's something you need to do. It's almost like a garden that needs tending to, so the weeds don't grow. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you for the, your comments. Anybody else want to share anything? Uh, Joe, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, for all the information, I will now very quickly redo my profile. <laughs> There's a lot wrong with it. I, I just have a quick question. Uh, when uh, it's listed like 500 connections, does it mean first, second and third connection or just the first connection? Just the first. So okay. first are connections um, when it says 500 plus. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No problems at all. Oh, and just, just something I didn't mention before, just a quick one. When you write your content, um, make sure you write in the first person rather than about yourself. Because you want it to be that when people read it, they feel connected to you. But if, if it's written about you, and Irene, I think yours might be written in third person. So, you know, Irene is, is the number one, blah, blah, blah. It's easier to talk yourself up in third person because it's, you know, it's awkward in first. But if you write in first, you'll just find people will connect more. So when I send my, I'll, I'll share with my, my profile blueprint with you. Um, I'll, and I'll, share, share it, I'll send it to you and then you can distribute it um, if you like. I've got a framework to write that so it uh, becomes a bit easier. Because you do want to, you need to sell yourself, but you, you want to sell yourself in a way that's um, not first. And I know culturally, because um, I've done a bit of work with a couple of um Asia Pacific companies and they had a national conference here and I remember I remember the guys from I don't know if it was Singapore or another country they were saying that it's culturally you don't put yourself out there you don't call yourself the best and the number one it's not deemed a, a good thing to do and, and I know Americans are quite comfortable doing that Australians are quite humble as well but it's it's finding the way that's right for you you know so you, you do sell yourself but without selling yourself in a way that sounds salesy <laughs> yeah. Any other questions from others? I just want to thank um, the organizers and, and Joe. Uh, learned so much already. <laughs> I mean, quite frankly, I set up my LinkedIn and parked it and didn't do anything about it. Now I'm looking at it and thinking, oh my goodness. <laughs> so thanks very much. Very, I, very practical and usable tips. And I really know what are your homeworks. Oh, definitely. Make sure Got someone list. accountable for that. And that's probably the follow up from this. So if there are people in this group that you want to be like account accountability buddies with, um, check in with each other. And also, if you're feeling uncomfortable writing about yourself, maybe write it and then send it to some a colleague in the group. And, you know, because they might they might see that you've missed something. You haven't, you know, really celebrated something that you could have done because often we downplay things that, you know. So, yeah, just, um, just do that so that um, you've got some insights from others. Yeah, that's that's a great suggestion as well. Um, certainly, it's been such a wonderful session today, Joe. And uh, to the community here, well, Joe runs quite a lot. So just make sure you connect with her. Probably that's that's the way that you can go and join her other workshops. And what she shared is um, uh, probably 1% of whatever that she does. <laughs> right. So the iceberg, we've, we've just touched a bit of the surface. Uh, there's, there's so much to it. And I know we've gone through quite a lot today, but I wanted to give you lots of actionable things, but there, you know, there is a lot more to it. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, just before we go off, uh, can I request all of you to turn on your cameras? I'll try to take a photo, but that's okay. Don't be shy, coaches. <laughs> Okay, ladies, uh, put on your makeups. I'm ready. <laughs> okay, look at the cameras. One, two, and three. 
come up with an action if you can that's the second one two and three one more time one more time <laughs> one two and three thank you thank you joe i'll, I'll touch base with you and um well uh, uh, of course people are going to be connecting with you some may have already done i could see yeah thank no you problems very much and uh, no we'll keep in touch as yeah, well. yeah. And stay safe. I hope it's all, um, you know, good over there at the moment. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, no problems at all. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, coaches. Bye-bye. Thanks, Suresh. Thanks.